Welcome back to the Adonai Gameplay Animation Workshop. Today we're going to be looking at uh, retargeting skeletons and then creating animations and adding static meshes to our player characters, etc. So the first thing we're going to look over is how we can retarget the Unreal Mannequin uh, to something which is similar to the Unreal Mannequin. For instance, in this case, we were using the skeletal mesh of the SK Mannequin UE4 with weapon, which is basically a Unreal skeleton, which is painted red along with a sword. So let me show you a comparison between these two. So let me go to Mannequin, Character, and then the skeletal mesh for this. As you can see, both of them are in the exact same pose, even though they are uh, slightly different because this one just has a sword attached to it. So if you go to the skeleton for each of these, uh, as you can see, this skeleton, the way you retarget this so that all the animations that are set for the Unreal Mannequin uh, or the mannequin with the sword is playable with the unreal mannequin as you go to the skeleton then you go to retarget manager and then you click the humanoid rig and as long as this is scaled to unreal like unreal will automatically place all the bones in the proper positions then all you need to do is just save once you save that then you can just right click and retarget to another skeleton once you click that then you can select different skeletons based on whatever you need all right so let's get that part done once that part is done what you will be able to do is you will be able to use any and all animations that were created for that particular character but uh, for the bossy character but use it with your own animation blueprint so let me just go ahead and show you that so for instance the boss has a charged combo uh let's go for let's go for the uppercut right this uppercut this is as an animation that is uh, specific to the bossy character but now that we have retargeted the skeleton we can also play it with another character all right so okay the second thing today we looked at was how we can add different types of uh, weapons or static meshes to sockets within a player character. So the first thing you usually want to do is you want to disable your animation blueprint. So you can either go ahead and set this back to none and then compile it. And that would put your character into a T-pose or you could just select it to use animation asset and make sure like nothing is selected in terms of the animation asset. And that usually works too. Uh, so I'm going to go and select the animation asset for now. Okay, once your character is in a T-pose, it's not moving. You can go ahead and add component on the left-hand side and select static mesh. You want to make sure the static mesh is parented under the mesh. That way you can use a parent socket and then you can pick any bones within it. What that will allow you to do is you can set up a the initial location, rotation, and scale of the static mesh or any object you want uh, to the particular bone you want it to be. So for instance, let's go ahead and take, let's just do another sword, right? So if you have this sword, it's a clearly a giant sword. So let me just scale this back to be very little, 0.15. Okay, now this is just the same size as the other swords. And now I want to attach this to a parent socket. Right now we don't really have sockets, we have bones. As you can see, like this looks like a bone, that means it is a bone. Um, and let's just add it to the head, because why not, right? I just, I just want a head, I just want a sword above his head. Okay, and once you've done that, you can see like if we go back and add animations again to this so if we go back here and then just use any particular animation uh let's just go with attack attack one montage right? as you can see the 
sword stays on his head like it is attached to it okay clear this let's see how we can actually create a socket though so for that what we need to do is actually go into the skeleton of our uh of our character and then select the bone you want to create a slot in so for instance i wanted to create a head slot i will just go to the head bone right click it and then add socket and then you can name the socket whatever right and then if you save this you can go back here and now if you go to the static mesh you can see that the head slot appears on the very top so what the head slot allows you to do or the socket allows you to do is that this socket is different from the bone itself so if you move the bone for instance if i move this bone then it will also move the head of our character right but what we want is for our character's head to stay in the same position it was but our socket to move to a different position so for instance i want my socket to be a little higher a little to the right side this is where i want it to be so now you will see our sword automatically gets updated to that position right so what this socket is allowing us to do is if i press f on it it's giving us a zero point this is going to be so there's a relative location this relative location is from the head slot itself so the distance from this point on the head to the socket itself and what that is doing is it's giving us a point of reference where our static mesh is going to stay which means if i zero this out this is the exact same point so wherever you see the little circle between the three axes that's the center point of the sword and you can find out the center point of the sword if it's uh, towards the handle or towards the end or something by going and opening the static mesh itself and then clicking bounds and then you can see how your uh, uh, sword is divided based on the bounds it is placed in okay let's go back to the sockets so sockets are helpful in case you want things to stay steady without actually updating where the bone structures are or sometimes you create sockets which are not uh, attached to a bone so something like a belt which would be near the pelvic area but not on the pelvic bone itself so you have that socket there um okay so let me go ahead and delete that for now go to this static mesh and then go attach it to whatever okay so once you have that set up I basically have mine set up to be attached to the right hand and to the left hand and then I have them scaled to be smaller that's how I have mine set up and I can just go ahead and use the animation blueprint okay then the next thing we learned today was um, how we can use different animations within our character itself so let's go to the animation blueprint or before that, I guess we can go over the regular blueprint of how we're pressing our attacks. So basically, the left mouse button goes into something uh, called the play anim montage. So we need an anim montage that we can play. And how do we create an anim montage? It's very simple. You just go to any animation and then you just right click on it and then you create anim montage. Once you create that anim montage, what anim montage allows you to do is it has a default slot within it. So for instance, within this one, uh, this is categorized under the default slot group, which means we can get it to work with our animation blueprint. Uh, okay, my computer's acting weird. Sorry about that. There you go. We have the default slot so basically it means that we can continue moving around while we use animations or after we're done using the animation our character just simply won't go into a t-pose but it will go back to the base movement or the locomotions oh also for the base movement here under the default i have also updated uh the jog blend space based on the bossing animation idols that we had from the animation pack uh, and we were able to do this because we uh, retargeted the skeleton properly 
Okay. So now that we have a way to play the animation using an animation blueprint, we needed to make sure that we can't just spam click and then our character constantly just go through different attacks without waiting for a change, right? So for instance, if I just go ahead and plug this in right now, this is without a true false condition. Basically what I can do is I can keep pressing the attack button and then our character will keep changing animations, right? Because it's constantly going through a loop of things that shouldn't be the case. It should be always like it plays one animation and then it finishes it, then it goes to the next one. So what we've done here is we've created a small branch with the boolean is attacking. So basically whenever this variable is false, only then can the player input another uh, value or another input to attack. That's how the combo is going to continue, which is why we have a multi-gate setup, which can allow us to do four attacks one after the other. And since it's looping, it will always go from zero to three and then it will keep repeating it. And inside the macro, we have it set up. So as soon as uh, this macro is played, is attacking is turned on and it will run until the end of the animation, after which it will turn it off, which will mean like until the animation ends, the left click button just won't do anything or well it will do the print string but it's not that's just for development and as soon as the animation is over you will be able to press it again and then it will go into the multi-gate all right and that leaves us to the last thing that we did today which was uh how we split up animations so for splitting up animations what you need to do is you open any animation sequence for instance this is an animation sequence, which is short. Let me go to the original one that we worked on today. Right, and if you wanna split this into two different attacks, cause you can see there's, there's a pause and then it goes to the next attack. What you can do is you can find the frame you wanna select. So you could just go to, I say frame 90, right? You can right click it and then either remove from frame zero to 91. So you can have the second half of the animation or remove frame 92 to 203, which will give you the first half of the animation. And once you split that, you save that as your animation, then duplicate this and then have another animation, which is how we managed to have two animations. One, which is uh, attack P1, which is just a swing. So this is the first 90 frames. And then the second part is uh, attack P2 which is the second part of the combo, which is the slam. And then we've just created montages based on that. And then we've put those montages in our character blueprint. And that seems to cover it all. I know this was a longer episode because we covered a lot, but for the most part, all you need to remember is how you can split animations. That default slot is important for the animation montages and how you can play static meshes into sockets and how you can create sockets. You can also create sockets itself in your 3D program like 3ds Max or Blender, but you can also do that within Unreal if you need to. And that's gonna be all for today.